those of you who don't know, my name is Michael Forrest, and it's quest time. Now, before we get going, I'm going to ask if everybody can stay off of this stage area here. Uh, this way, nobody blocks the display, and it gives me a little bit of room to move around the whole hosting thing. Um, now, uh, I'm going to bring your attention to the menu wheel on your lower left. You're going to notice there is a microphone icon at the top of that menu. And if that microphone icon is clear, that means we can hear what's happening in your environment. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn that to red. And I see it's been done already. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, so, you know, I've noticed, um, you know, when, when you have, uh, when it is red like that, right, you're muted. And that means if somebody comes into your, your space there and says, hey, are you still on that thing? Right. Well, feel free to answer them because we're not going to hear that. And you won't face social road back at the campfire if your dog starts barking or something like that. You won't become known as the avatar that suddenly started barking during its quest time. Um, just because you're muted it doesn't mean you can't express yourself. You're going to notice that there's a pink cheek smiley face in your menu wheel also. And when you press on this, your emoji panel opens up in front of you. And it gives you a lot of options to express yourself. So when I say something really deep and meaningful and you feel it right here, it starts to build up. You can just let it out, let it flow. Maybe some backup dancers come out from behind stage, right? We break in the quest time, the musical, and you're very impressed. You can throw up the applause that I live for and take them on with the drink. Uh, in. Um, you know, if I ask you a yes or no question, you can say yes by smiling like this. You can say no by frowning like that. Uh, if I say something funny and you want to show me you're laughing, you can do this like silly face emoji type thing here. Uh, if you need to get my attention, you can raise your hand like this. This is not the same as at raising your hand to ask a question. We'll be taking questions and comments at the end. Uh, this is more like if there's a problem with maybe, you know, you can't hear my voice so good and it doesn't clear up. Usually it does. Uh, or, you know, maybe maybe the display here is burst into flames that actually happened one time because my mods have a good sense of humor. Uh, thanks for helping out today. We got uh, Jessica, Raven, and I. We got Lauren. We got Captain Adam and Hummingbird. And yeah, thank you all for for helping me and giving me all the support that you've been doing uh, while we've been doing this. Now, uh, while we have these emoji panels up, let me ask you all some questions here, just so I can get an idea of how to proceed. Um, uh, how many of you are actually on a quest right now? You see some emojis or hand raises or you know, some indication that you're on a quest. All right. Let's see. Quite a few. All right. Cool. Very nice. All right, uh, so how many of you are uh, upgrading from an Oculus Go to a Quest and you're here to learn more about it? Anybody? All right, awesome, very cool. All right, so uh, gives me some idea of how to go. Uh, now, this event is going to be about the Oculus Quest, but all are welcome. So if you're on a device, feel free to hang out. You may learn some tips that can be helpful to our growing Quest community because ultimately we'll be getting a very large influx of uh, Quest users that are coming in. You know, there's more and more every day. And, uh, you know, it's good to be able to share that information. Uh, that being said, it's going to be specifically about how the, uh, the quest performs in all space. Some of the things you can do to you know, get more out of that experience. Uh, so, you know, we could talk about whether or not Vader's actually immortal or, you know, the, the best move for Beat Saber. You know, maybe the rhythm's gone off a little bit there. You know, uh, that stuff's fun, but we're mainly going to be talking about how these devices perform in all space. All right. So uh, when I first actually got my quest, I was coming from an Oculus Go and uh, I was, I'd been in all space for a while, something like about 10 months, and I was, you know, used to, uh, you know, everybody in here seeing me move with one hand. And I grew up in Brooklyn, so I talk with my hands a lot. And I was, you know, not feeling like I could, it, it was expressing myself as fully as I could uh, in all space. So uh, when my quest arrived, I was very focused on getting that left hand, right? Uh, but it turns out that these controllers, they're so much more than in your hands, right? They're also your feet. They have you, you move around. And if you're here today, you already have a handle on how the left thumbstick's going to move you around like this and the right thumbstick's going to turn you in circles. Or if you combine them, you know, you can do these big, big elaborate circles that make my presentation so much more dramatic. And everybody do this, like make this large circles like that. Usually when I look out in the audience, people are doing this. It looks like ballroom dancing. Let me see how that looks. I always say I wish everybody could see what I see uh, when you guys are doing this. Oh, that looks awesome. And it turns out now you can. We just got a YouTube channel. So if you look for Ravenhall Labs on YouTube, you'll see us. And hopefully, you know, you'll see yourselves. And for a little while, you get to feel all space famous. That always feels good when you see yourself. And I'm like, that's me in the video. I see myself. I do. You know, you can do that. That's a lot of fun to do. You know, and of course, if you subscribe, it helps. That's always nice. All right. So uh, when I first got my quest and I was, uh, you know, taking it in, you know, you can look and you see these are a lot of buttons. Now, if you're already familiar with the quest and you're familiar with the controls, don't worry. The exercises we're going to do to get people, you know, skilled up is uh, they can be a lot of fun to do. So we're gonna you know, hopefully have some fun while we go over this. You know, uh, The first thing that you, we're gonna talk about here is uh, on your right controller and your left controller, you got this grip button here and you got this grip button here. This is gonna allow you to interact with your environment in all space. So this is gonna help you grab basketballs, sparklers, you know, and also to interact with the, the world editor. And while these are a lot of buttons, like you have uh, and the behaviors of some of these buttons are gonna change. Like if you're gripping something in the world editor, right? You have this right thumbstick here, right? That right thumbstick, the behavior is going to change in the world editor. Uh, now the right thumbstick will work like this. If you move the, th the thumbstick forward and back, it's going to move the object away from you or pull it closer to you. If you move it left or right, it's going to change the scale or the size of the object. 
And speaking of thumbsticks, you have this left thumbstick here, and you, uh, this is, uh, has more than just moving you around. This also does something else. When I first got my Quest, I came into the campfire, right? And I was feeling like, you know, I was feeling really good. I just got a new device. I felt like I was, you know, walking on air. I felt like you know, I was a little bit above everybody. And I walked, looked around, and I noticed everybody was so much shorter than me. And then I found out why. I looked down, and it turns out I was floating this high off the ground. You know, I was like floating up in the air like that. You know, and it uh, turns out that on the Quest, you have to worry about vertical movement, right? Uh, so if, and is anybody willing to like change your height for me so we can show everybody how to do this? Uh, if anybody's like willing to you know, pop up a little bit, or, you know, kind of scooch down. Here we go. There you go. Oh, thanks, Dave Piranha. Uh, now show everybody what happens when you press down on your left thumbstick. Show everybody like that. Boom. All right, and that's recenter. He just changed his vertical height just like that. And, uh, you know, so if you're feeling, you know, you're too tall or you're too short, you just press down on that uh, left thumbstick and it'll get all better. Um, now, while these are a lot of buttons, some of these buttons do the same things. All right, you have this select button here, this trigger button, and if you have your left pointer enabled through your main menu, this left select button here, right? And that's all gonna do the same thing. What that's gonna do is if you move your hand around the audience of the crowd today, and you hold down any one of these buttons, and you're moving your hand around like this, you're gonna see everybody's name pop up. We've got Druffin. Well, we have an admin here today. Whoa, oh, scary bed. Oh, the pressure. Oh, wow, an admin. Nobody told me. No, I wasn't warned. I didn't get the memo. All right, cool. Uh, hey, Jeff, and I've seen your, your work, actually. It's pretty good stuff. Uh, so, yeah, we have, uh, you know, so you press on that and you see everybody's name, and that's, that's a good thing. You know, uh, and then we also have this left trigger button here on the left controller, and that acts like an accelerator. So let's say I'm walking along, right, and all of a sudden I press down on that left trigger. It's going to cause me to speed up. I can run down off stage here, do a quick little lap here. Maybe we get a whirlpool going. Can everybody do a whirlpool? Go left this time, see if that mixes it up. Everybody do a whirlpool. Let me see some motion here. I want to see everybody move. Let me say, how's that look? Keep it going. Keep it going. Unless you're getting dizzy. And when I see anybody, oh, that looks awesome. Very cool. Oh, wow. Look at you guys go. Is anybody dizzy yet? Throw a hand up if you're dizzy. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. All right, you guys got a huge like, tolerance for the motion. Awesome. All right, let's see what else we have here. We also have the, um, let's see, when you are, uh, oh, yeah, this, where, on both controllers, on the right controller and the left controller, you have these teleport buttons. I'm hoping you're in a line dash teleport, which you can do through your main menu. This is real cool. It's like a zip line effect. And if everybody comes up along, like, let's say, this wall right here, right, and it's form like a line right out here, what happens is if you hold down one of these teleport buttons, you're going to see if you aim it at the ground, you're going to see, like, a round circle appear on the floor, right? If you aim it across the room with the right controller, right, and as soon as you let go with that button, boom, you get thrown right across the room. Every teleport over to me, see what you got, right on over, you know, and then you got the left teleport button on the left controller. Now we'll try it with that one. You aim across the room, and then as soon as you let go of the button, right, boom, you get taken right across the room. What's also cool is if you actually hold down both teleport buttons at once and make an X on the floor, as soon as you let go, you do a little zigzag kind of teleport, which is kind of fun to do. I'll we'll do that again. We'll do a little zigzag. Now, the first time I tried uh, some of this stuff, you know, when I was uh, I was going to the universe, right, and back then it was being hosted in a very large world, and I went exploring after to see what, you know, look around. And I walked up to the world edge, and I'm looking over the edge, right? And all of a sudden, you know, I must have gone a little bit too far, and I fell off, right? And as I'm falling, I look over, and I see this cliff, all right? And I aim my controller at the cliff. I hold down my teleport button as I'm falling. As soon as I let go, boom, I was on the cliff, and I was teleported to safety before I had to respawn, right? It's not like any real actual danger in all space, but I was, uh, you know, able to, like, throw myself on the cliff before I had to respawn in the beginning of the area. And at this point, I knew I was getting used to the controls. It can take a couple of days to a week to get used to things, but as soon as you do, uh, there's going to come a point, you remember me saying this, you can still feel the plastic in your hands with the controllers, but there's going to come a point where these actually feel like your hands, right? The way you move them, and you won't think about what buttons you're pushing, you just do it. Like if I say, hey, everybody, look at that window, right? I'm not thinking about how to point. And the way I'm doing this is I'm holding down my third finger on the grip button there, right? And that's causing me to, you know, to point. All right, if everybody wants to try that, you know, you can do like a threatening gesture like this, like you better be a good audience like that. Or you can squeeze your other, your left grip button here, right? And you can get two points like this and you give me a Brooklyn hello. You know, everybody give me a Brooklyn hello? Yeah, there you go. Hey, who is that? How you doing, mutated piranha? There we go. Like that, just like that. Very cool. Who else we got doing that? We got Druffin doing it. We got Matt doing it. Very cool. We got, we got Alestria, full name, doing that like that, right? Uh, and let's see what else can we do. You can, we can take a picture and make this moment last forever. You know, just kind of like squeeze that trigger button there like that. Or you can hold it up like this and make an all space logo. Can everybody give me an all space logo? Let me see an all space logo. Oh, that's awesome. I love seeing that. First time we did Quest Time, we had like 65 people. And the whole audience was going like this. You know, it was an amazing moment. Uh, now, if you squeeze your, your trigger buttons here, right, you can give me two thumbs up. Let me know I'm doing a good job. Or maybe it's not going so well. Two thumbs down, right? 
or maybe uh, we're a little confused. We haven't made up our mind yet. and go like this, you know, maybe we're undecided, right? A couple of uh, quest times ago, somebody went like this. I thought that was pretty cool, right? Now, if you touch your thumbs to the buttons or to the thumbstick without actually pressing down, all you have to do is touch them. Your thumbs will actually go down and you can combine this into what I think is a cool dance move, kind of like that. Oh, wow, Piranha's got some moves. Let me see that again. Oh, you, you just, you're just dancing there. You're gonna do a little going on, oh, I don't like that. And this is a great thing. When some, you see somebody do something that you like, right? Mirror them. It's the best way to learn these gestures. So basically copy each other. Like I saw somebody, one of the, uh, uh, one of the first quest times when somebody found out, you know, my username is Raven Hall Labs, right? They came up to me and they were going like this, right? Came right up the stage and they're glad they thought it was the coolest thing ever and I had everybody doing it, you know? So it's, uh, you know, have everybody doing this like Raven logo. That's pretty cool. Doesn't have to be any kind of bird, I guess. You know, but yeah, so those are the gestures and you'll get used to them over time. And the best way to get used to them is by mirroring uh, each other. Now, it's also important to remember that, let's say you're having a room scale experience, right? It always happens that when you walk out past your menu, uh, somebody's gonna say, hey, open your main menu. And you're gonna be like, ah, where is this thing? And you're looking around and you're looking around. It's always behind you, right? Uh, one of the best ways to deal with this is you'll always have on your left controller this flat button here, right? This means you have your main menu in your hands at all times. It's handy information. I'm gonna use hands as much as I can there. But if you press down on that, your main menu will open up. And if you press down on it again, your main menu will close. All right, so it's pretty useful because like, you don't have to always look around for that big blue button because it's right there in your hand whenever you need it. You just press on that button, your main menu opens up. It's pretty great. Uh, now also we have if, uh, you know, like let's say somebody comes in your space and let's go dinner's ready or maybe something happened where you get a little dizzy and need to leave VR in a hurry. The best way to get out of all spaces is by pressing this flat button on your right controller. Don't do it now because if you disappear, I'm going to feel it, right? But when you press on this, you get taken out to the Oculus main menu and you're going to be given a choice to quit or resume. Uh, the resume button's great if you press it by accident and it'll take you right back into all space. Like say maybe you're dancing too much at the Ingiverse and, you know, your hand slips and next thing you know, you're at the Oculus main menu and it's interrupting the song and you're starting to panic. Don't worry, you just hit that resume button you'll be right back in all space. Uh, but let, let's say you want to press that button because you want to press that quit button, right? Because something's gone wrong. Like what can happen is if, uh, say like you're, you're in all space, right? And you turn your head and the whole world moves with you. This can make you feel really dizzy, right? You start to feel really sick. You just press that flat button on your right controller. It's the fastest way out. You hit quit, right? The app will close and that's going to solve most of the problems that you're going to have in all space. However, occasionally, sometimes when you press a button, it's not going to work because maybe your device freezes. And the way this can happen is like, let's say, you know, you see this like black edges all around your screen and you move your head and you see this black void in every direction you look and all your friends are frozen there like statues, right? You know, something's gone wrong, right? You press that flat button and it's not giving you the close option. So, you know, your device is frozen and you need to reset it. Now you could take your device off to reset it, right? You could, that'll work. And if your device is in, in a charge cycle, like, uh, and the light's not lining up when you plug it in, or and it takes 20 something seconds for it to restart, you can get to thinking that your device is broken, right? And that's what happened to me. So from then on, I learned to reset my device while it's still on my head. And I think this is the best method to use. And the way you do this is you take your index finger and you swipe it on the side of your headset until you feel a raised up button, right? Don't do this now, but you feel that raised up button, right? And then you counterbalance it with your other finger and you squeeze your fingers together to push the button and you wait about four seconds. After about four seconds, your device turns off, but don't let go, just keep holding it there. And after about 10 seconds go by, you start thinking, why did Oculus make it take so long? I don't know. But then you wait about, you know, 15 seconds and you start thinking about friends you haven't seen in years. You know, you wonder how they're doing. 20 seconds, you think about the dog you had when you were little, you know. And wonder, you know, who's a good dog? And then you start thinking about life. You know, all the times have gone by. You know, just to start reflecting on things. After about 24 seconds go by, you know, you're going to hear a beep. And when you hear that beep, pull your fingers away from your device. You'll see the Oculus logo and you'll be taken right back in the, in the VR. And uh, this is going to solve the majority of the problems that you're going to have in here. Um, but occasionally something weird might happen. Like there was this one time Oculus did a firmware update, right? And when they did this firmware update, I got this message when it came out of Allspace that said Oculus Rooms is closing. And I'm like, okay. So there's an, and literally that was it. There was a button that said, okay, that was the only choice. So it said, okay. And uh, then the screen just said loading. And I restarted my device after about four minutes of watching it say loading. And it still just said loading. So I asked my good friend Google about it, you know, be very useful information there. Uh, and it said a lot of people were having this experience and the best thing to do was a factory reset. Now, this is a good thing to do if uh, in an extreme circumstance, but please remember that if you have any photographs on your device, uh, you're going to lose that. You have to reinstall all your apps. You won't have to buy them again. You'll have to re-download them uh, and any settings that have any app. Like let's say in all space you have the blinders turned off, right? You're going to have to redo that when you come back in. Uh, but I think it's good to know for an extreme circumstance that you can put the device back the way it was when you got it. 
You know, now if you're on Quest, you're used to the Guardian system already because you know you've you've done the tour, you've danced with the robot, you played with the blimp. You know, that was a lot of fun, right? But your Guardian system can actually be used in all space in some pretty unique ways. Uh, and the first of which is earlier I mentioned, like you know, that feeling of getting dizzy and motion sickness. One of the best ways to deal with that, if that happens to you, especially if you're new to VR, is to take a good look at your hand, right? Just focus on your hand. It'll actually help it pass. And you know, once uh, it starts to pass, you slowly pull your hand away and take in the world around you. But well, you can also use your guardian to accomplish this. And I like to say, when you're using your guardian system, it's a good idea to you know be careful because like a lot of times in all space, you see somebody walking along, they're having a good day, and all of a sudden, boom, they go like that, right? Because uh, they bumped into a wall in the real world. Right. And now you want to be sure not to you know, injure yourself or damage your equipment. So I find it's a good idea when you play with the Guardian to leave your hands and you see that grid appear. Right. And when you see that grid appear, you can still move your thumbsticks. Right. So while I'm facing my real world wall right now and I'm holding on to it. Right. I can actually move my thumbsticks all right, and orient myself in VR. Right. To go up like this to this display here. Right. And I kind of anchor it onto that display. So I know anytime I look at the display, that's my real world wall. And let's say I back up a little bit too much. And I fall off the stage and I'm in the audience and the audience gets hostile and everybody starts coming at me. They're like really seriously come at me, trying to make me dizzy, right? Yeah, seriously, give me a best shot. There you go. All right, so you come in there, hands in the face and all that kind of stuff. And I'm looking right at that screen. So you guys can't, no matter what you do, you can't make me dizzy because I'm just looking right at that, that screen right there, right at display. And I know that's my real world wall and it gives me a sense of balance, all right? That's a good thing to do if you're feeling like a little bit dizzy in VR is to lock on to a real world object like that and anchor yourself to the real world. It helps a lot. All right, now, uh, another thing you have is uh, you can alternate between a room scale experience right, and a station experience pretty effortlessly when you're in all space, all right? So like, let's say that you know, I'm walking up to my guardian edge here, right, right there, and I stick my head through a room, I stick my head right through it, and the pass-through camera goes off, and I see, oh, I've got my coffee right there. I'm going to take a nice little sip of my coffee, right? And I see i got my chair right over there. Right. So now I can walk out over to my chair and now I got a blue button asking me if I want to have a stationary experience. I'm like, not yet. Let me get comfortable. And I go in and I sit down in my chair there and I press that blue button. Right. And all of a sudden VR comes into view and I find I'm still in all space. I never actually left. Right. Uh, so it's pretty useful to have if you want to switch. It works in the other direction, too. I was moderating this event one time and I felt like getting up, walking around, which is a big deal for me. So I get up and I go to step into my guardian there. But on the quest, occasionally, your quest is going to lose your guardian and it's going to ask you to redraw it, which normally isn't a big deal. But I was moderating at the time. I didn't want uh, the quest, you know, I didn't want the host to be upset and I would go in and explain it and didn't want to get back at the event. So I better just redraw this thing really quick. And I'm redrawing this thing. I'm putting the boundary out there. And I'm wondering, why is my space so big? The host is going to be really upset. What am I going to do? I got to get back in all space as fast as I can. And I'm drawing the boundary out there. You know, it's such a large player. This is really bad. And then as soon as I close the loop, the grid comes up. And you know what? I was still in all space. I never left. All anybody saw was my hands like this. Right? I did this bit one time and I actually crashed right when I went with this. And everybody's like down in the audience going like this going, he's so committed to the role. Just look at him. Look at him. He's just so committed. He's like, really, he's just so into it. But I really actually crashed. Um, but yeah, all anybody sees is your, your hands frozen like that, and you're basically having an out-of-avatar experience, right? So, uh, you know, it's, it's neat to know that you can actually switch back and forth, and this way you can be comfortable in VR and in all space, and, you know, and alternate is what works best for you. Now, this next thing I'm going to show you isn't actually useful, which is fun, all right? When you go up to your, uh, your guardian edge, right, and make sure you have enough room to stick your head through. When you stick your head through, that pass-through camera goes off, and you can see the real world, right? If you do this really slowly, you'll be able to see both realities at the same time, right? And you're going to get, this is cool to do because you get a sense, a sense of how tall avatars actually are. They're actually about like six feet, I'd say. And it's kind of cool to see the avatars of your friends, like in your living room, in your office, or, you know, wherever your play space happens to be, you know, maybe in the back of a truck, you know, because I actually, a few weeks ago, we had somebody that was a truck driver that actually, uh, on his break, would actually go into the back of the truck and he would actually come into all space that way. I thought that was pretty neat. You know, so yeah, so being able to see avatars in a real world environment is something that you can do just by finding that little sweet spot by just going right up to the edge and seeing both realities at the same time. Kind of fun to do. Now, one of the great things about the quest is it just works, right? Uh, it doesn't mean it can't work better. There are some accessories that you can try that really enhance the experience. Like when I first ordered my quest, I ordered it with the earbuds and it takes about a month for these earbuds to arrive. Uh, well, in my case, it did because they were on back order. And uh, so while I was waiting it, waiting for it, I got a sense for how what a rich experience, what a rich sound experience there's available on the Quest. There's no feedback or anything like that. Really great stuff. And you have, you know, when they finally arrived, I figured I'd try them out. And they kind of dangle off the side. And I don't know what I look like when I'm in VR, but these are like, kind of like they're like earrings for your headset. So I like to think I look fancy when I'm in here, right? And 
I take them to the campfire and test them out to see how they are. All right? And you guys know there's a breeze in the campfire. Nobody told me this. I walked over to that fence, right, and I heard the water rushing by. And I didn't know that either. And I'd been in old space for like, you know, 10 months. And I was like, wow, this, this is really great. Uh, and it turns out there's a lot of ambient sounds in all space that can make the uh, experience so much more immersive. So it's absolutely worth checking out. You also have, when I first started using my headset, listen, I hear a lot of people say that the Quest isn't comfortable, right? And when you first get it, it's not, all right? Especially I had these high cheekbones, right? So the top of my headset was digging into my forehead and I was getting like a bruise up there. But I thought it was so neat of an, you know, the experience was so great that I just kept coming into VR despite the, that bruise. And yeah, I pushed it a little bit too far. And one day I'm hosting one of those Allspace VR 101s and I'm getting to the part where I'm telling everybody about, you know, how Michael Forrest, he knows too much about Allspace and he needs to be stopped, right? And at this point, I feel some moisture in my headset. I'm like, what's going on, right? Well, you know, I'm a trained professional. I had to keep going. So I kept on going, but I'm wondering, what is this? And I know what you're thinking, all right? Well, let me tell you something about Michael Forrest. Michael Forrest does not sweat ever, right? So it wasn't that, it wasn't that at all. I didn't know what it was. So when I come out of, when I come out of Allspace, my wife comes in the room, she asked me, how, how did it go? Right? She's cool like that. And I lifted up my headset and I said, well, and before I could even answer, she says, go look in the mirror. And she did an end up voice where you pretty much have to do it, right? So I walked over to the mirror, I take a look in the mirror, and it turns out I had these red rings around my eyes because that sore, that bruise that my headset had given me had opened up and I actually bled into my headset, which is, I know, completely disgusting. I cleaned it up. I um, hates it. That's where we're getting the frowns. But, you know, I was really just, you know, uh, you know, cleaned it up real good as best I could. But I knew I had to do something about this. So I found a company called VR Cover. Right. I ended up with a cool story too. I got to walk around going, going, that's right, all space. I bled for you. And then I do this whole dramatic thing where I put my fist up like this and go, that's right, all space. I bled for you. And drop the voice down like that. Let me see your rage, everybody. Let me see ever just going like that. Let me see like someone indignation from the crowd. There we go. Very nice. Awesome. Oh wow. Wow. Sh show and proof. Look at this. He's really, he's you're just angry there. Look at you. You're really doing it, man. You're owning it. All right, cool. All right, man. Very nice. Good body language there. All right, so what happened was uh, I knew I had to do something about this. So I found a company called VR Cover. Now they make uh, a couple of different inserts that you can get. One is great to prevent light bleed. See what I did there? Um, and you also, I went with this cloth one. If you've got your face in a pillow, and it gives you two of them, right? Uh, so you can be wearing one while the other one's being cleaned, right? Just so you always have it going on there. But it was coming, it was coming from uh, Thailand, and it was going to take a week to get to my location. So, you know, while I'm waiting for it, I kept coming into VR, right? And I learned something. I learned that the, like, you know, like it's like a lot like having a baseball glove. You know how you condition it with the oils to break it in? Your headset's no different. The insert that the, the headset comes with, the oils in your face will actually soften it, and it's going to change the balance. It turns out that there's a, and they don't advertise this enough, there's a breaking in period for your headset. Right? And, and, and it takes about maybe a week or so of using it, uh, and it becomes more comfortable. Now, when you first get the device and you realize it's on, and you think, oh, this is uncomfortable, people get the urge to modify it. They try different things like straps, they try uh, external battery packs on the back, counterbalances. I would suggest don't modify it until you've gotten used to it, until your headset's gotten used to you and you to it, because there is a breaking in period. And if you skip the breaking in period and you get one of these devices, right, then the breaking in period will, will happen naturally, and then uh, you know it'll be off balance all over again, and you'll have the opinion that the Quest is uncomfortable, and it's really not the case. If you let it condition, let your oils in your face condition the fabric, it's actually going to change the balance. And in doing so, uh, you're going to find you're going to get to a point where you basically don't feel like you're wearing a headset at all. You're just in here. You know, these are your hands, these are your eyes, and you just feel like you're here to get to, you know, together with all of us today, you know, which is pretty awesome. All right. Now, um, you also have these protective inserts for your, if you wear glasses, all right, that's good to protect your device. And speaking of protecting your device, they have this Oculus travel case. This is really great. Now, listen, remember, if something that happens to your headset, like you leave it like maybe uh, you know, on, like next to a window and the sunlight hits it and damages it because sunlight can damage your lenses, right? Uh, you know, and if something happens to your headset, it's not like losing a toaster, all right? Especially if you're spending a lot of time in old space and you've made some relationships and you have some friends in here. What can happen is you're going to experience a deep sense of loss if something happens to your headset. So it's really important to actually, you know, take care of it. And, uh, you know, and this case is a great way to do that. If you want to try any of these products, they're really easy to find links to them. Uh, we put them up on altvr.com. If you go at the very top where it says events, right next to that's the word channels. And if you press on that, you'll see a list of all the Allspace channels. Uh, we're like on the last page toward the bottom there, to the very end, uh, where it says Raven Hall events, like it says up on the, on the booth up there. Um, and if you press on that, you can take it to our event page, and you're going to see all these products on the left-hand side, links to them. You'll also see a join Discord button if you want to help us out on events like this. Uh, also, you'll see the most important button ever.
the subscribe button. It lets Altspace know that you enjoy our content. We don't get paid to do this, and every time we see that number go up, it's like a thank you. We'll just, it makes us feel so good when we see that happen. So if you would press the subscribe button, we would appreciate it, you know? And then, uh, you know, then Druffin can know that we're doing a good job in here, all right? All right, so we are Druffin. We're doing our best, man. We're giving it all we got. All right, so now, uh, let's see here. We have, uh, we're gonna be taking your questions now. The way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna make a raise hand button appear in your lower right as if by magic. Get that timed a little better. There we go. Now, if you have any questions or comments, maybe you tried an accessory you'd like to share with us, or maybe you had a problem I didn't mention and you learned how to solve it. You know, any questions or suggestions or whatever, we take them now. Let's see what we have here. We have uh, Mutated Piranha. You are on the air. What do you got for us? You have to feel like a radio host when I say that. You're on the air, Piranha. Hey. Where'd you go? <laughs> hey, Piranha, what's up? Um, so I wanted to ask earlier when you mentioned the factory reset, Yes. Um, when you do that, will it delete, uh, like, say, I have scores on B-Saver and stuff, will it delete those kind of uh, scores and stuff? Like, in terms I believe, like though, because those that's probably going to be stored locally. There is a chance that maybe on the Oculus server itself, because you know, like, how you can with your friends and stuff, so it may be stored elsewhere. Uh, I don't know, like, for sure. I do know that you are going to lose a lot of your settings, so it would make sense that you would. You know, not something I'm willing to risk to find out. I'm only going to do so much in the name of science. Speaking of science, how did you get mutated? Was it like a chemical accident? Was it radiation? You know? Oh, no, it was, I'm going to be honest, I made this name up when I was like 11 years old. Okay, well, then it's stuck. All right, cool. It's right, stuck. I like origin stories. I like origin stories. I think it's a cool name, personally. All right, uh, let's see who else do we have here. We have, uh, let's see, we have Braden. Braden, do you have a question? Braden, you're on the air. Welcome to Quest Time. Raiden, um, where you at? The other day, I, the other day, I just got my headset for Christmas. And oh, congratulations! The day, yeah, the day after, I was playing on it, and it just started buzzing for some reason. I thought, I don't know what it was, so I shut off my headset and didn't stop. Wait, like, I like buzzing, like it was like, it was like, like right in the head strap was almost like it was a bee right in the head strap, like like kind of a wobble, yeah. was it like that? It All right, like the this right actually, this sound yeah. issue scared me like you wouldn't believe, because first of all, I thought there was a bee in my headset, right? Second of all, I always thought, you know, I paid a lot of money for this. I want, I, you know, my headset to just work, right? But it turns out uh, that this is a known issue, right? And they are working on a solution, because one of the great things about Quest is, like, when you first get your Quest, it's awesome. You're happy. You love it, right? And, you you know, you think it's great as it is. But then, like, I had OC6, and they announced the Oculus Link. They announced hand tracking. And it's like they're making improvements in it uh, on it without making you buy a new headset. It's awesome. And stuff like that, where like there's this, if you use Oculus Link right now, sometimes the microphone in the Quest doesn't always work uh, when you're on, on that Link cable. And what they're going to do is they're actually um, working on a solution where they'll actually solve it as they push the updates. So that's a known issue. And the best way you can address that, remember the thing I showed you where you're pressing down both fingers like this to reset your device while it's on your head? Right? You hold that down yeah. for about 30-something seconds, and then, and then you see the Oculus logo, and you hear that beep, you go like that. Right, that's the best thing to do. As soon as you hear that warbly, the buzzy sound, just restart your device. It takes it, it takes care of it. Yeah, like is it happening now? Is my voice going right inside of here? No, like See? I was just is playing Fader Immortal and it just suddenly happened. Well, maybe Vader did it. But the, you know, he's got the force. The force is strong in this one. It maybe he sensed it coming. Yeah, I got them lightsaber skills. Yeah. All right, everybody. Let's see. Uh, we are over by a little bit, so let me show you something else real quick here. Uh, we also have, on a, I, during my events that when they're over, I take everybody's flying, but on the Quest, since we have two pans, you now have this flight tool available to you, and you may not know about it, you've probably seen people carrying these around, uh, and the way they work is you draw these little lines, they move you the, in the direction that you draw, short lines will take you short, you know, slowly in that direction, but the longer the line, the faster you're going to go, oh, I just banged my head on the ceiling, I'm not used to the new set, little bang my head up there, why would, they, why would they put that, you know, that beam up there right over the stage like that, right, I just smack my head right into it. To, to take it out. All right, but uh, this is the flight tool, and we teach everybody how to use it. So if you want to learn it, what we do is we, when we head out, right, we're going to go into that blue light at the uh, back of the room there and do the load screen, and we'll go to the Ravenel Flight Academy. If you want to learn how to use the flight tool, I'll teach you there. Just ask me, you know, and learn how to fly if you never have. Uh, but before we go, I want to ask if everybody, if you like, learned anything at all today, like let's say you're in a campfire, right, and you see somebody like they're this high on the ground, right, and, you know, you walk up to them and you're like, what's wrong, little buddy? And they turn and you look, they look up at you and they go, I'm on a quest and I'm stuck in the ground, right? What you do is you tell them to press down on the left thumbstick. They'll pop up and they'll feel better. You'll feel better because you help somebody, you know, and uh, 
let's see, I get the message from someone. All right, here we go. Uh, there we go. Um, but yeah, you'll feel better. And this is how we keep this all space thing going by a few, you know, by sharing the information that we learn with each other, right? And helping each other out. All right, but uh, thank you all for joining us today. You've been a really great audience. And uh, yeah, come uh, come out with us. And as we do, we're going to exit the music. So let me see your moves. I'm walking in that load screen. There we go. Everybody, come on, let's get moving here. Out that load screen, right? That back door and then that blue light, just like that. I'll see you all at the academy. There we go. Here we go. We're going there.